This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. Traffic. We all love it. The chance to hunch over a steering wheel and not relax while minutes and hours pass fruitlessly by. Mmm. So good. Sometimes I just open up my map and look for peak traffic times and hop on that highway for no reason. All joking aside, traffic is the worst. And when the traffic breaks up, sometimes it seems like nothing caused the traffic jam to begin with. Why? Why is this happening? Good Stuff producer Sam Grant answers that question. When you're stuck in a traffic jam, a lot of things might come to mind. Why is this happening? Is there a crash? A lane closure? Is there a truck full of bananas tipped over spilling across all lanes? While all of these things do cause traffic jams, they're actually not the major cause of you being late to work. This might be surprising, but the main cause of that frustrating congestion on the highway is, well, you. If we were all machines that had perfect reaction time with perfect reflexes that never got distracted, this wouldn't be the case. But the fact is that human behavior on its own causes a large amount of the traffic jams that you see. This is a relatively new idea though. Physical and mathematical theories of traffic flow have been around since the early 1920s. But up until the 1990s, these models mostly purported major causes or reasons of traffic flow problems were things like the number of lanes reducing, a problematic off-ramp, or a plain and simple accident. Because of this, the solution that most civil engineers presented to solve the problem was to make things bigger. More lanes, less intersections, different types and locations for on and off ramps, etc. This was in part due to a series of complicated equations like this one. It's a really complicated equation. I don't know what it says, well I kind of do. Basically what it says is that the more cars that are on the road in a given amount of space, the worse traffic gets. And this is true up until a point. If the density of cars is low enough and the space between vehicles is adequate, it is rare for a spontaneous traffic jam to occur. No matter how much space civil engineers created, however, the problem of traffic jams simply would not go away. Predictions and models could not adequately predict how much space was needed for certain densities of traffic. In fact, traffic jams occurred at much lower traffic densities than these models had predicted. In simple terms, mathematical models did not match up to traffic patterns observed in real time, especially traffic jams where there was no clear obstruction. Recent research, however, has offered an explanation for this discord between theory and real life. These phantom traffic jams that occur seemingly out of nowhere have been coined shockwave traffic jams. In this shockwave scenario, something minor occurs which causes a chain reaction which leads to a backup. But what would happen if there weren't even any minor incidents or distractions for the driver? Would a traffic jam simply appear out of thin air? Thanks to a group of Japanese researchers, we now know the answer to that question is yes. They conducted an experiment in 2008 where 22 cars were equidistantly spaced throughout a 235 meter track. They asked the drivers to start at the same time and accelerate to a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. There were no distractions on the course and traffic flowed really smoothly for a bit. The distances between the cars started to vary, and soon a cluster of cars started to slow down. This traveled in a wave, causing the cars behind the slowdown to come to almost a complete halt, and congestion flowed backward throughout the loop. So why did that happen? Simply, human error. Drivers in the experiment accelerated differently, kept uneven distance between the cars in front of and behind them, and behaved generally, well, like humans. So essentially the reason a traffic jam occurred in near-perfect driving conditions is that we aren't perfect. In terms of real-world scenarios, these types of shockwave jams can occur from as little as a poorly timed lane change, with that incident creating a series of other minor miscalculations that have now made you late to work thanks to all your fellow commuters. While there are certain behaviors drivers can adapt, such as maintaining equal distances between cars and a constant speed, these types of traffic jams will continue no matter how hard city planners might work. Until, of course, driverless cars take over the roads and we won't be able to gum things up with our very imperfect, non-robot brains. So what do you think? If we were more conscious of our driving habits, could we eliminate some of that sweet, sweet traffic out there? Or are driverless cars the permanent answer? Let us know in the comments. And special thanks to our patrons for making this episode and pretty much everything we do possible.